What up guys, it's your boy James here, Mr. Five Star himself. And I just wanted to take a moment to once again, thank each and every one of you for participating in the sixth annual Brawl For It All Flag Football Tournament. We could not do it without you. We appreciate your support and we thank you for continuously supporting what we put forth out. So, we sent out a survey because we wanted to hear from you. We wanted to give you an opportunity to put, put out your ideas, to hear what you had to say. We want to hear your good, your bad, and your ugly. These are the type of things that help us grow as an organization to continue to make sure that we're meeting the needs of the customer. So, with that being said, let me go ahead and jump right into it. So, one of the questions that was sent in on our survey was, why was the tournament hosted at two locations? Well, unlike most places, Atlanta doesn't have a lot of fields here that have multiple fields in one location. So, we had to search and search and search. And what we found is that Mud Creek and Traymore, they're five minutes apart on the same street and they can accommodate our needs. We would love to be able to have the tournament at one location, but we've outgrown most of the field space here in Atlanta with one location. So the best we could do is to put you at a location where you can get back and forth and it was easily accessible without driving through a lot of traffic, stoplights, conflicts and all those things. So until Georgia, Atlanta builds up something bigger, we'll have to continue to have it at those two locations. Now, the next question we had was, why was the D-Man, the eight-man open played at Traymore versus Mud Creek? The reason for that was because we want eight-man open plays double elimination. In the double elimination bracket, we cannot set who's going to play at what time. We can only put the game times, but because we don't know who's going to win or lose, we have to make sure that it doesn't conflict with the other formats, especially with our women's format. Majority of our women's teams are coached by the men who play in the eight-man open bracket. So therefore, we wanted to make sure we allowed our coaches to play as well as coach with no conflict. So that is why the uh, eight-man was at Traymore versus Mud Creek. Although it might have seemed easier to you guys to have them both at one location, for time, play, for time um, purposes and the number of games, we had to split them up. The eight-man open required 20 games with the possibility of having 21. So we wanted to make sure that we gave them a dedicated space that they didn't have to worry about anybody else being in their aim. Now, to make sure that I accurately capture your questions and concerns, I had to write them down. So I'm gonna pull out my notes so that I can make sure that I address everything as accurately as you submitted them. Let's see, the next question you guys had was, why wasn't there a mixture of referees? It seems as though all the referees came from Atlanta. That's absolutely correct. All of the refs we had this year were from Atlanta. And the reason for that was because a lot of referees pulled out on us at the last minute. We originally had referees representing the DMV, North Carolina, and a few other areas. We wanted to make sure that everybody was covered. However, at the last minute, refs pulled out, so we had to go with what we had. Uh, in the future, we'll continue to make sure that we pull from a group of referees so that they will be diverse, so that nobody will feel like it's just all uh, hometown cooking. You know, we, so we want to make sure everybody is represented in the future and going forward, we'll always have multiple uh, referee locations on site. Uh, we had another question. Well, this was a theme on most of the surveys. Why were the referees so bad? I'm going to be honest with you. I can't accurately answer that question. What I can say is that after the tournament, I got with our director of officials, Mr. Edward Patterson. And we talked about some of the concerns, a lot of the concerns that you guys had. And we wanted to make sure that we addressed them straight off the bat. We can start planning for the next tournament and next year brawl for it all. And making sure that a lot of the concerns that you guys had 
were addressed. We don't want you to go back out there feeling like we did not adhere to what you were saying. Now, this next question, well, this was like actual compliment. I had a great time at Brawl for it all. Does Five Star Sports offer other tournaments? Well, we actually do. We have two significant tournaments throughout the year, our Brawl for it all tournament and our Halloween Havoc tournament. So next up will be our Havoc tournament on November 2nd and 3rd. Uh, that'll be the next tournament we have. It's not as big as Brawl for it all, and we don't try to make it that way, but we also try to give our people a different look, a different environment, a different atmosphere. So on November 2nd and 3rd, we'll have our Havoc tournament here in Atlanta. Now we also have our Border Wars tournament. That's a tournament that we've created to pit Alabama's best seven man players against Georgia's best seven man players. And we wanna make sure we get an opportunity to promote that and put that out. So if you haven't seen it already, we have our Border Wars tournament. It's a draft style tournament and it's really fun. Uh, we've done draft tournaments for about four years now and the players tend to have great fun at those tournaments. So those are our next two tournaments coming up. And then after the new year, after Nationals, we'll release our list of 2025 tournaments. Uh, the next question, it's a pretty long one, so bear with me. There were big discrepancies on communication. My team came to the tournament with an understanding based on what Five Star put out. However, when we got there, we were told things had changed by the refs. When we asked why, they said because this is what James said. But when we asked James, he stated that he never made those comments. What can be done in the future to fix this? Very, very, very valid point. Let me tell you something about me and my brain. I'm very big on consistency and communication. So with that being said, we plan to have captain's meetings prior to the tournaments going forward. We'll have a Zoom call. That Zoom call will be broadcast so that although the captains are not, uh, all the captains are the people we're addressing, you'll be able to tune in and listen to what they're saying so that you can get the information directly from the horse's mouth. I hate as an organization being told that we heard you said something that I never said. Oftentimes, I don't even know about these stories until you bring them to me. So therefore, take these key points away going forward. When we say stuff, we put it in writing. We'll send out an email, we'll post it on Facebook, and we'll text our captains. So if you hear things that didn't come from those formats and it was a third party source, I would suggest that you contact me immediately to verify those statements. We do not like confusion. We want to make sure that you are getting the most accurate, up-to-date information possible. So again, if you hear something that directly conflicts with what we've told you verbally and in writing, make sure you have somebody contact us immediately. If it's a grave situation, protest, especially with the rules. We don't change rules in the middle of the tournament. Nobody should be coming to tell you that we changed the rules and James said it. Because if I didn't put it in writing, I most likely didn't say it. Um, there was another question. Why were the eight-man D1 team games played so late on Sunday? Well, this kind of goes back to what I said earlier. This is one of the largest D1 brackets that we've had so far. And because it plays double elimination. As not to conflict with the eight women and now the coaches to be in multiple places, we had to separate it. And also we rotated. Previous tournaments, the women generally run late. The women are the latest bracket. However, we wanted to give the women the opportunity to finish up early so that they could watch the men. So that is why the eight man ran at the end of the tournament this year. However, we're working to make sure that it doesn't end as late in future tournaments. Why did the tournament have to start on Friday? Why couldn't it just be a Saturday and Sunday tournament? Well, we had 82 teams over 11 formats. It is almost impossible to run that many formats and styles in two days without conflicting. Now we could have did it and you guys would have been scrambling to get from format to format, but that's not a great tournament. 
that's not what you guys pay for. That's not what we put out. So we want to make sure that we can address and do exactly what we say. So in the future, most Brawl for It All tournaments with this many teams will start on Friday evening. We didn't start the tournament before five o'clock because we wanted to make sure that people had a chance to get here, get comfortable, and get to the fields. So just notice, note that when we have tournaments this large at Brawl for It All, we're gonna to continue to have a Friday start date, but it will be a Friday evening. Um, the next question, the comment, I understand that you have said you don't want to send people home on Saturday, but an 8 p.m. championship game on Sunday is late. You should consider sending team homes on Saturday. After talking with a lot of the eight man teams, we've made the decision that it may very well be necessary to send some teams home on Saturday. While we don't like it and we want people to be able to enjoy the full atmosphere, we have grown to the point where we will have to start sending teams on Friday, I mean on Saturday. So when we look at the schedules in the future, we may have to start your format late on Friday and send you home on Saturday, or you may play early Saturday morning and then some people will get home sent home Saturday night. We'll do our best to put a gap in it to give you rest and to give you ample time. But the tournament has grown to the point where we will have to start sending teams home before Sunday. And the only way to not get sent home on Sunday, before Sunday, is to win. Um, the next question, why was the D1 men at the Muddy Fields? So that's an easy question to answer. Uh, Traymore Park had been resodded. The fields have been closed down since June. So you guys were the first ones to play on that field. However, prior to the tournament, for two weeks straight, it rained almost every single day. There was actually a concern with the uh, city about closing down the tournament, on closing down those fields on Friday, which would have put us even in a bigger uh, hole. But they allowed us to come out, they allowed us to stay out there. So in order to do that, we had to have you guys separated. Um, why didn't you offer five men non-contact? Actually, we did offer five men non-contact. We didn't have any teams set register for that. We didn't even have any teams pre-register for five man contact. So we had to take it off the schedule. Uh, we'll continue to offer the format, but if nobody signs up by the registration deadline, we'll have to take it off. Brawl for it all is one of the best tournaments I've attended outside of nationals. The refs were subpar this year, but please keep up the good work and keep it going. Thank you. We appreciate positive feedback. We know a lot of the times when we put out surveys, we're gonna get a lot of negative feedback and we don't duck that, we don't run for it. We read those comments and we take them at face value. We want to make sure that we are doing the best we can to provide you with the best product we can and give you what you're asking for. So thank you. Uh, why were only certain games recorded and why do we have to pay for recordings? Well, it's like this. We have one cameraman. AF3 Productions and Watch TV volunteers a lot of their services for us at a discounted rate. So in order to get exclusive access, we make it to where you can pay for the games that you want. Just like with the camera, uh, camera people. When you have the photographers out there, you pay them for a dedicated shoot. That's what the Watch TV people do. You pay them for a dedicated recording. Their work is not free, their time is not free, and most tournaments have media and they charge. So we decided if you want to be having exclusive coverage, you'll pay for it. Now, on Sunday, we didn't allow any uh, requests to be paid because our focus was the championship games. And we recorded majority of the games. There was a slight conflict with the eight man open and the eight women's D2. Uh, the eight man open started later than it should have because of a delay. And the eight women D2 started on time, so the cameraman went over there and recorded that game. In a perfect world, we would have been able to get that eight man open recorded, but we weren't this time. Uh, we were fully prepared to go for the, du the double dip game, but that did not happen. So, just so you know, in the future, if Wild Watch TV is out there and they're recording, if you want exclusive access, you will have to pay. But also keep this in mind, the rate you're paying is not what they charge five star. We pay the difference.
we don't mind paying the difference because we understand the, the importance and value of having your games recorded. And we can't foot the bill for people who want things. So you have to pay for what you want. That's just life. Uh, my team played when the rain was coming down hard. It was actually fun, but what is your rain delay policy? I saw some fields stop while other fields were being played on. Well, our policy is like this. We defer to the players and the coaches. If the players and the coaches feel that it's not safe for them to play, we stop playing. If the players and the coaches want to continue to play, we allow them to play. We don't ever want to put a person in a position to feel like they were unfairly uh, treated. So with that being said, the only time we will stop the games if there is blinding torrential downpours, hail, or multiple lightning strikes. Other than that, we defer to the players and the coaches. I had a great time. The atmosphere was fun. Thanks for putting this all together. Thank you for attending. As I said earlier, we couldn't do this without you. We appreciate all the support that you give us. We appreciate you taking your time to come down here. And we just want to say thanks. Um, with that being said, we've addressed the majority of the concerns, that, that the common themes. We could not get to every single question because we'd be here for hours. But we wanted to take the common theme that we saw in multiple surveys and address those. And like I said, you have my promise that we will do our best to fix the majority of the problems that we can within our control. There are a lot of moving parts. There are a lot of things behind the scene that you may or may not see. But at the end, we try to put it all together to put out the best possible product that we can. So we thank you for coming to Atlanta. We thank you for participating in Brawl for It All. And we look forward to seeing you at all of our future events. For Five Star Sports, I'm James. Have a great day.